Hi guys, this is gsnom.com and I'm here with a review of the HTC U11 Live. Yes, I know it's a bit late for it. It debuted in December 2017, but right now the price has dropped and this may become a pretty solid alternative if you want a smaller HTC U11 to remember you of the quality of that phone. So HTC U11 Live, uh, it was unveiled at the end of 2017. We have it here. It's a smaller HTC U11 with the squeeze of the edges to activate various features with Android One based on Android Origin and uh, it also comes at a price of around 350 or 400 dollars on Amazon okay so I guess it's time to go straight to the review here at gsm.com it's available in black blue or white it's got stock Android and it's a 5.2 incher that's covered in glass there is a special acrylic glass back here it looks very much like the HTC U11 although more compact it draws a lot of fingerprints a lot of grease but at least the phone is compact and comfy in the hand no objections if you're going to use it with a single hand uh, it weighs 142 grams and measures 8.1 millimeters in thickness once again comfy premium materials uh, also not slippery but draws a bit of print so you may need a case on the display front 5.2 inch super lcd full hd and it basically has the same screen package as the htc u play plus gorilla glass protection now let's have a glance at the usual uh, video that we use for testing purposes okay so we go here and this is our typical test video i have to say pretty nicely calibrated colors okay brightness and wide view angles as expected uh, the contrast is rather mid-level and the bezels are rather big pixels have an rgb stripes arrangement as shown here and as far as the brightness is concerned it's not very constant sadly 393 lux 429 lux and finally 445 lux it's an okay result for a mid-ranger beats HTC U11 I know it's weird Moto X4 as well stays below the Sony Xperia XA1 and also the Xiaomi Mi A1 now if you want to do some tweaks you can do that from the settings you'll go here uh, and also go to the display and buttons you got your brightness level night light adaptive brightness wallpaper and some advanced stuff including font size display size screen saver and a couple more features Overall, I would say it's a pretty okay screen for the price tag and as far as the hardware is concerned, this handset will offer you a Snapdragon 630 CPU, which we've seen on many phones, Xperia XA2, the Zenfone 5 Lite and quite a few other handsets. 3GB or 4GB of RAM, we have the 3GB RAM version, there's 32 or 64GB of storage, micro SD card slot and luckily, thanks to the stock software and the fact that we don't have bloater and other problems, well, uh, everything is fluid here no lag no problem and even the games were fine we played reporter which is a horror game first person horror and it looked fine for me we also played riptide gp renegade which looks pretty cool it's a racing game it's not exactly young but it's good for benchmarks us you can tweak the graphics all the way up here we go now in the meantime, when I'm playing the game, I can already start talking about the benchmarks. So basically, you should know that this phone in Antutu 6 it can beat the Sony Xperia XA1 Ultra and the Zenfone 4 Selfie and at the same time scores below the Motorola Moto G5 Plus and the Nexus 6P, which is by no means a Sprite Chicken. And here, as you can see, the graphics are pretty fine, nice frame rate, nice effects and it responds to my commands pretty well. Now, I want to talk more about the benchmarks. You just heard about Antutu 6. We have several more. Uh, let's find them out here. Okay, so we also have graphical benchmarks. We got Slingshot. And here we scored above the LG V10 and also above the Sony Xperia XA2 Ultra, but below the Zenfone 5 and the Nokia 7 Plus. We also did a uh, Geekbench test, this one here. In the multi-core test, we beat the LG G6 and Pixel XL, which should be enough for some people, but score below the Xiaomi Mi A1 and in Xperia XA2, so there is room for improvement. The performance is okay, nothing unexpected, no surprises, and also okay is the temperature. We achieved 38.2 degrees Celsius in Riptide, the game you saw from before, and about, let's see, 33 degrees Celsius in GFX Bench, so there's no overheating, luckily. On the battery front, things sound pretty well with a 2600 mAh battery. It's okay for a 5.2 incher. On paper, we're promised up to 9 days of standby, 22 hours of 4G talk time. 
Now the actual usage time is shown here. This is our video playback test. It's simple, 11 hours, 15 minutes, which is quite good. It's okay in my book, it's the 67th placed phone. It can beat the iPhone 8, Galaxy S6 Edge Plus and Nokia 8, which is not bad, but it scores below the HTC 11 by something like almost 30 minutes or so. At the same time, it's below the iPhone 7 and Motorola Moto Z2 Play. Sadly, the PC mark test for continuous usage would not run, but I can estimate you can get 8 or 9 hours of usage out of it, maybe even more. It's about the level of a Moto X4. Charging is done in 1 hour and 42 minutes. It's okay in my book, superior to the HTC U11 and the Huawei P10 Plus. We also did charging in steps. You can see it here. Uh, 5 minutes is 7%, 15 minutes is 20% and 30 minutes is 45% while 1 hour is 82%, which is actually not that bad. Now, if you're going to go for to the battery section, we got stuff like battery saver, battery percentage, adaptive brightness, and of course, there should also be battery optimization, and I'm very happy with all the options. Overall, a pretty okay battery. Um, liking the video playback aspect. Now it's time to talk about the acoustics. We have active noise cancelling, high resolution audio 24 bit, and a singular speaker, which is strangely centered here. It's not here, it's not here, it's not on the side like a Galaxy j it's centered right here and it's very easy to cover with your hand just a bit of a bummer okay so let's go to the google play music here you will be able to trigger your equalizer with pretty standard options genre settings five custom channels bass boost you know all, the, all that jazz and let's actually listen to some tunes Okay, so conclusion, I would say that the volume is quite high. Uh, it's also a bit uh, annoying, a bit strident. That's what the sound uh, feels like at maximum volume. The bass is okay, good guitar, no vibration of the back, good highs. Too bad for the lack of stereo. I would have loved some stereo action here and here. Anyways, uh, I couldn't find FM radio on the phone. We have, uh, we don't have an audio jack, so we have special USB Type-C headphones of the U Sonic variety. You saw them in the unboxing. You saw them with the HTC U11. And we can also do some tweaks here. You will scan your inner ear and tweak the special profile of the headphones to your liking, which I'm kind of loving. I have to say, these are some of the best headphones I've used. I would even go as far as to give them a 10 out of 10, so solid acoustics all around. Uh, I guess it's time to go to the camera. But wait, I think I forgot something. Let's not go to the camera because I want to show you something else. I want to show you the decibel meter values achieved with this phone. I'm going to start with 87 decibels. This was achieved at uh, the front and the back of the phone with an acoustic sample. It beats Galaxy S9 Plus, which is not bad, and the Huawei P20 Pro, also not bad, but scores below the Xperia L1. And in the game Riptide, GP Renegade, 91, excuse me, 98.1 decibels. Once again, not bad. It beats the Galaxy S9 Plus again by 11 decibels and also the HTC U11. So I would say overall, great headphones, not bad speaker. Too bad you can easily cover it and there no, there's no stereophony here. On the camera front, things are rather simple, straightforward. 16 megapixel singular camera, LED flash, face detection, f2.0 aperture, 4K video, raw capture, no optical image stabilization and some HDR boost. At the front, again, 16 megapixel shooter, but with fixed focus. The camera interface is very straightforward. It's something that you've seen on basically all the latest HTC phones. We've got these custom options here and some raw capture. Other than that, standard HTC stuff. Now, I want to be brief this time about the camera. It's not by no means, it's not a new phone. And frankly speaking, there were moments when it felt like a bit of a disappointment. Why? Well. I loved what the HDR did in some of the photos, so the HDR really lit things up. Uh, it made the green look more real. In general, the green was disappointing here. The hue of green was exaggerated in real life, but the hue of blue was okay. It was a cloudy day, I'll admit it, when I took those photos. And close-ups were actually the high point of the phone. But the face, the selfies, they looked a bit soft. 
I'm talking about the soft edges of the pictures, not well calibrated uh, brightness and the colors and the texture of the skin, not the best. So I've seen better selfies for a 60 megapixel shooter, not that impressive. Panorama uh, 12,326 over 1362 and some of the selfies had burnt backgrounds, but when it comes to the close-ups, there's some Instagram worthy material here, so at least that checks out. You will need a lot of sun to be happy with the phone. It was a cloudy day, I felt I need to highlight that again. And when we tested the zoom, we found out that the images, well, they weren't that impressive. So if you're planning on doing some zooming, think again. Even more selfies, once again, not very impressive. I've seen better, to be honest, on other phones. And I have the feeling this is uh, some sort of uh, wider selfie, something like a selfie panorama. A nice feature to have for sure, but the background may end up a bit burnt. To me, this feels like a phone that fits basically in the area of a Zenfone 3, somewhere between the Zenfone 2 and Zenfone 3, not even exaggerating. It can fight the Huawei Mate 10 Lite, the LG Q6, maybe uh, Nokia 6 phone or the uh, Nokia 5. So that's the vibe I'm getting from this phone, but with more megapixels, catching more details thanks to the higher resolution. In the end, you're left with the close-ups, the reasonably calibrated colors, minus the greens and the not so good selfies. These are daytime shots. Let's go to the nighttime. Okay, so during the nighttime, I noticed that the flash tends to make things a bit white, too white. In general, the things were dark because of the aperture. The street light halos are quite big, but the colors are actually not bad. There is no strange yellow hue, orange hue, red hue, as it sometimes happens. And uh, somehow I felt less blurriness compared to the daytime shots. It's on par with maybe a good ZTE Nubia, maybe a mid-range Nokia phone from last year, the Lenovo K series. And uh, somehow I have a feeling that the low light capture was a bit better than the one during the day. Well, at least compared to my expectations. Okay, so it's time to check out some videos because we also did videos with this device. So here we go. We have uh, most of them here. Of course, we have colors and we also have panning and zooming. And some of the things you need to remember here are that you will lose focus when panning. That's something that I can vouch for. There is a good microphone. The zoom is actually not bad. Color calibration is okay, minus the greens and minus some of the reds of the roses. The sky has a pretty okay dynamic range at first sight. And the 4K video was actually almost flagship worthy, if not for dynamic range problems. Here's the zoom, which is actually not bad. Something else that's not bad is the electronic stabilization. I actually walked around with the phone and as you can see, no jitter, no stutter, no strange things. So electronic stabilization is A-OK. -okay. It was a dark day, a cloudy day, and this is reflected in the light of the video. We have a 4K clip I mentioned before, but you also have a front camera video. Not exactly a vlogger's tool, but also decent electronic stabilization. Okay, face rendering, but a pretty blurred and burnt background. Okay, and when you're shooting something like this, let's see. Nope, not this one. This one here, we can see some dynamic range problems. We're in a shady area. This is a well-lit area and there are dynamic range problems. At least the uh, exposure adjustment happens in a pretty okay manner. In the end, I would say that this phone films like a Sony Xperia XA1. It's inferior to the Sony Xperia XA2. It's about at the level of a Moto X4 maybe, or maybe an LG Q6. This is day time video. Low light video is a bit of a disappointment. It goes something like this. It's a bit red. It's a bit shaky and flaky. There's motion blur when panning. The microphone is okay. Halos are big. There's a lot of grain. So basically not memorable for sure. If you want to film, stick to the daytime, you'll be happy with the result. Now, as far as the web browser is concerned, we got here good old Chrome, stock Chrome on this stock phone. And let's load up gsmm.com. Here we go. Loads up reasonably fast. Has, well, poor benchmarks, Sun Spider and the works, but it's pretty fluid for me. We got this swipe available here. And now it's time to talk about connectivity. The phone comes in a nano SIM flavor. It's got GPS, AGPS, GLONASS and Beidou. It's got a dual SIM or single SIM setup. It's got LTE category 9. It's got an USB Type-C port at the bottom. There's no audio jack on board. There's Vo LTE. There's Wi-Fi calling. There's NFC, Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C. 
also DLNA AirPlay, which is not something you find on many Android phones, and Miracast. Calls were loud and clear, and uh, we also did a test, a speed test, and let's see how that ended. Okay, so the results are here. Wi-Fi is 268 mega per second downloads, 25.3 mega per second uploads, which is quite okay. 4G is 69.1 mega per second download, 43.6 mega per second upload, also reasonably solid. On the OS front, we're dealing with Android Oreo, pretty stock, pretty clear. We've got the Google feed right here with news and sports. We've got multitasking with the carousel, also split screen. You can squeeze the edges of the phone to activate the camera, Google Assistant, Alexa, what have you. But I feel that the icons are a bit too big in the standard stock version. Luckily, you can tweak them from the settings. Other than that, well, you know the drill. We got your widgets here. All of them are stock. And as usual, we're going to go to the settings, see what's new. Use Sonic Setup, Edge Sense. You can choose here which apps are triggered by a short squeeze or by uh, squeeze and hold, launch an app, take a screenshot, turn the flashlight on just by squeezing. And you can also adjust your squeeze force here. And there are even in-app options. Now here we have the fingerprint scanner, which I'm going to test for you. So fingerprint, next, pin. Okay, the setup will take something like 15 to 20 steps. It has already started. Here we go. And we're done. It's added. And now let's see how snappy it is. Not the fastest in the world, but pretty really accurate. That's my finding. It's no flagship, but it can handle the test. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's talk about the apps. Okay, so apps. I counted here 25 apps. All of them are stock. You got your Chrome, you got your Docs, Drive, Files. There's Maps, of course. There's Photos, the Play Suite, Sheets, Slides, YouTube. Everything stock, nothing fancy, not of the art, nothing out of the ordinary. And of course, this being Oreo and all, you got uh, your snooze for notifications. You got your new design for the notifications area. You got notification dots and these extra options. And now it's time to see what the conclusions are for the HTC U11 Live. So on the pro side, it's a great looking phone on a mid-range price. It's got an okay screen for me and a pretty okay performance. And actually the battery was not bad, especially if you are gunning for a bigger video playback time. Good audio and I'm loving the headphones. Okay microphone, very good close-ups for the camera. Okay electronic stabilization, solid connectivity and clear Android audio. And it will probably receive Android P pretty fast. Now on the con side, there's no audio jack, there's no stereo speakers. Uh, brightness is not constant, gets dirty easily. Some of the pictures are washed out. The camera was a bit underwhelming overall. Selfies are unimpressive and the icons are too big. Yes, I know you can change that from the settings, but many people will not and will not bother to do that. In the end, it's a sexy little mid-range phone with a clear OS Android One. It's, I would say, good for gaming and music. That seems to be the core. The camera is almost mediocre. It's barely saved from calling it mediocre. It's decent, but there are too many blurred shots to make it memorable in any way. At the same price, you could get a Nokia phone or a Motorola phone, which feel like better alternatives on the camera front. But otherwise, if you're going for compact and sexy, this is it. It's a gaming phone, music phone, and maybe food close-up phone. But if you want a better camera, you may want to try a Motorola or a Nokia. This is it from jsnroom.com. This has been the review of the HTC EU 11 Live. This is from us. Bye bye.